Welcome back to another episode of Trading Secrets. Today we are joined by Bachelor Nation's newly engaged couple and fan favorites, Joey Grazia Day and Kelsey Anderson. <laughs> Joey walked away from his lead role at The Bachelor this past season after asking Kelsey to marry him. Since their season wrap, Joey and Kelsey have spent their time traveling and spending as much time together as an engaged couple. Having come from two different career paths and geographical locations, Joey, a tennis pro in Hawaii, Kelsey, a project manager in New Orleans, they are now faced with the deciding factor what is next for both of them personally and professionally as they move to New York City this summer. Or is it this summer? We'll talk about it. Where do they want to live permanently? What do they want to do professionally? Do they see more reality TV in their future? We'll touch it all before the show, during and after. Joey and Kelsey, thank Thank you so much for being on this episode of Trading Secrets. Thank you to, oh, we're happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. What an intro. Yeah, I know. That. You All right. nailed that. I was like that. the Gratia day, and then it was like day. Anderson. Anderson. <laughs> All right, that was the most fun I'm going to be. I, I could honestly it. at this point just put this down, but <laughs> yeah. let's start with last night, eh? Yeah. You guys are in Nashville, CMA uh -huh. Fest. Good yep. to have you guys here. We're going to talk about that, but we got to tell the story about uh, we're at Barstool last night, okay? <laughs> and we're just doing our thing, having fun. Dot and Charity are like completely crushing the dance floor. Yeah. Like I'm like, all right, they're killing it. You and I decided to go to the bathroom. And then all of a sudden, security comes after you. <laughs> Well, because of Jeffrey Star of all things, I, you gotta I, you gotta explain it. I you don't even know what it. I'm explaining at this point because <laughs> I was just trying to go to the bathroom and we were walking and all of a sudden this guy starts pushing me backwards and then I get stopped like I can't go backwards anymore and I don't understand what's happening and he keeps pushing me like you need to move. I was like, no, sir, I can't move. You're pushing me into something and he's like, no one's behind you. He's been pushing me into a pole that was like one of the I guess one of the tapes that you need to get around like and I'm just. Getting carpet pushed, pole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I just get pushed into a pole and he kept pushing. He's like, dude, I can't move. And all of a sudden, Jeffrey Star just walks right right behind him. It so, was so funny. Yeah, it was it was a low point of last night for me. Yeah, it was a high point. It was a high point for you. Though. You couldn't move, I, he but just the security guy couldn't see him. why. He just yeah. kept, like, he pushing because it was a short pole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was right on my butt. I was yeah. I couldn't go anywhere. And he was like, "There's no one behind you," which honestly was really funny to me. Like he did not realize at all like why he, you couldn't move back. But it was it broke my brain for a second that because I incredible. literally wasn't like, moving but he was pushing like, I me. Know, I can't move. You're pushing me into a pole. I thought he was pushing me into a wall. You just come up to me you're like, I just got assaulted but I don't know if I did and I'm confused. Can you help me? Oh, well that was last night. All right, well let's talk about yesterday actually. So you did the CMA tent. Mm -hmm. I asked you how it went. You said you're, you know, you signed like 200 different photos and you're taking pictures, you're doing these meet and greets. I think about, uh, you know, Kelsey, just about a year or so ago, year and a half ago, your assistant project manager in New yeah. Orleans, Joey, like two years, not even two years ago, you're a tennis pro mm -hmm. and a tennis teacher at Ensworth here in Nashville. Now, fast forward, what, 18 months and you have a line of people. By the way, I was doing a thing with Mr. Clean and we left at like 9.30, literally we had like a Mr. Clean model and we passed the tent and people were lining up for you guys at 9.30. Yeah. So was, you think about packed. that. When like you're looking back on that, pass the pole in the ass and Jeffree Star, <laughs> go back a few more hours, like how just wild is it to you? What does it mean to you when you think about yesterday, sitting there signing 200 different autographs, taking pictures? How surreal is it? What does it feel like today? Yeah, I think we both are on the same side of just grateful. Like yeah. we understand that we got dealt a crazy hand, but we just feel so lucky that there's been so much support, so much kindness through all of this. Um, yeah, and it was wild because we're in Nashville where I used to live and there's people coming up that like are telling me connections that I used to teach their mom tennis or this and that. And it's uh, kind of a full circle thing to be here and doing something like this now. But we had the best day yesterday. Everyone was so kind. Yeah, everyone was so nice and it was very surreal. I was like, why do people want my signature? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but is it, it was, still like pinch me to you? Like, yes, you it, to, like, for me yourself? it fully is. I yeah. feel like Joey's been in a been around all this a little bit longer but for me still it's like i don't know if it'll ever feel normal like i don't know i'm very grateful but it is very foreign to me <laughs> yeah we both said it should never feel normal, normal like we're, yeah. we're yeah. just kind of embracing it and enjoying yeah. it and we know this is a crazy time but i think what we love most is the little stories we get the people yeah. sharing like how they connected with the season yeah. and how much they enjoyed it and uh we both are really proud that we felt like we were ourselves fully through it so for people to connect with that and then talk through it i just it was beautiful for us it was a good day it yeah really there, was. there were people coming up with like tears in their eyes talking about how like uh, they've lost a parent and like the way that i opened up about like losing a parent was like 
just like very comforting for them. And that meant a lot to me. So it's like really special to hear those stories and see how you touched other people's lives. There's literally nothing better than that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're given a platform you never expected. Yeah. And now you're having an impact in like such a positive way, totally. which is absolutely yeah. beautiful. All right. Well, let's get into some of the career stuff before the show. Right. Mm-hmm. And then we'll get into uh, what today looks like. That's all coming. Mm-hmm. But Joey, let's start with you. So teaching a tennis pro here at Ensworth, then you went to Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Talk to me a little bit like what that career track looked like and the money behind that business and like what you expected five, ten years from now to look like if this didn't come your way. Yeah. So when I was at Ensworth, um, it was kind of when I was in a transition too, because I left a sales job and I just tennis is always what I was good at, is what I came back to. Um, but I was pretty much a full teaching tennis pro on staff. And for that, you're usually ripping somewhere between 40 to 50 hours a week on court Mm -hmm. and, you know, somewhere along the lines of making, depending on how many people are on court with you, around 80 to hundred dollars an hour. So you do well. That's pretty good. Yeah, you do well. I didn't realize that. It's it's, (laughs) it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely, it can be lucrative, but at the same time, the the game of a tennis pro is you can only do that for so long. Because 40 hours on court is tough. Um, You either have to get to the point where you're teaching more high level players and you're kind of sitting on the side or you're teaching ladies and you're kind of feeding a lot more but Mm -hmm. if you're doing full-on hitting lessons which can happen sometimes I mean you you beat your body up so the goal the track was always for me and and still something I would look to later today was to be a director of a place to be in the position where you're overseeing a full facility and you're more dealing with the business side where you have pros that are working under you and they're giving you a percentage of their lessons and you're kind of overseeing everything and doing your version of it or maybe you're on court more 10 hours a week and you're choosing who you want to teach but then you have a full group of people that you're kind of really just setting your own dynamic and, and, and trying to get a club that makes sense to you. So that was okay. always where I was trying to build towards. I, okay. was, just, I was still in the, the teaching stage yeah. of it right now. In the teaching stage, though, making 100 bucks an hour, how much goes back to the house? Uh, usually uh, you would be somewhere along the lines. If you're at a good place, you're making 70% of it, maybe oh, more uh, in a tougher place like 60. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I would say usually it was somewhere around 75 to, to 90K a year is what you could probably pull from, from what I was doing if you're putting enough hours into it. And then a director, which is where your mm-hmm. tra- your trajectory, what do they make? Usually you're uh, in a setup where you're probably getting paid a salary for your, your business. And I'd say a good staff job, somewhere between 40 to 60K is what you're making. Making, but okay. then you're getting a percentage of everyone's lessons. Okay. If you're clearing probably somewhere close to 150 as a director, that's a great starting position. That's what that's if you have a good functioning club. But okay. they're all different because it's how well your club's doing. You can do a lot better. My uncle was in it and he did really, really well when he was doing it. And okay. he only did it for summers. So it's it can be it can be very lucrative if you get the right setup. Sweet. That's awesome. All right, we're gonna get into the finances of the transition into reality TV. Before we do that, Kelsey, let's go to you. Assistant project manager. Yes. I mean, you're you're deal, you got the cones going up there you got concrete being poured you're yeah. doing it all in a job like that how much how much can you make what's so it like i was ma- i was new to it i was only there for like a year and a half before i went on to the show um so i was making like 50k but okay. i know project managers that are like full project managers mm-hmm. they make like 100k plus like it's you can make a lot of money in that field um especially the de- the different type of projects that y'all work on like uh, the project that I was working on, it was a million square foot renovation project is huge. Mm-hmm. So like the project managers on that site were probably making a lot of money, like the full ones. Yeah. But I also did uh, owner representative work. So I was in between the owner and the contractor. Okay. So I pretty much made sure that the owner was getting everything that they wanted and need out of the project. Yeah. So making sure that all aspects of scope were being met with like the timeline and the budget and making sure that the contractor was like, you know, doing what they're supposed to. And okay. like checking their numbers and checking their receipts and all of that crazy stuff. Okay, so when you were doing that stuff, you fast forward now, and I put out my Instagram and I could read all of the questions. Yeah. Like everyone asked me about their professional, personal, financial lives. What do you guys want to know? Yeah. I can't tell you how many people are like, when is Kelsey getting into modeling? When is Kelsey? <laughs> like literally, I'm not, jo- I'm not yeah, just yeah. saying, like, it's got to be 50 plus. Yeah. So if I went back to that Kelsey yeah. who's working the receipts of project management yeah. and said, like, hey, in about a year and a half from now, you're going to blow up on social media, be a reality TV star. You are going to earn the heart of America's sweetheart and then become <laughs> America's sweetheart. And now everyone's saying you're going to be a modeling. Like, was that 
ever in your trajectory, did you know you're on to greater and bigger things more than just assistant project management or was that I, never in your future? I think the, the greater things after assistant project management in my mind was a uh, project manager. Like it was like just like not being an assistant. <laughs> next ladder. It was like just like the next level of that. It was never going to be like all of this that has, you know, came from this show um, that I am very grateful for. But yeah, it's wild. It's like, it's wild. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> yeah. And even obviously after the show, we're all friends. We were talking yeah. what's next steps look like. Mm -hmm. And I remember Kelsey just getting off the show and she's like, Jason, I just don't get it. Like, yeah. And we'll talk about that. We're like, I don't get how this world could possibly be a profession. Yeah. And I think that's probably a testament to like how you think about things. Like yeah. I think there's so much reality and you're like, no, I'll just be a project manager yeah, <laughs> and that's it. And here you are. Now people are calling you to be on the next big magazines, which you just landed a cover. Yeah, But let's actually figure out how you got here. So totally. how does The Bachelor find Kelsey Anderson in New Orleans? What did it look like? Um, I found The Bachelor. How's actually. that? <laughs> <laughs> I applied myself. Uh, some of my girlfriends were like, you have to apply again. Uh, one of my girlfriends applied wait, to me. Wait, wait, you said again. Yes, one of my girlfriends had applied she me applied. like three years ago. One of my girlfriends had. Who was the had, bachelor then? I have no idea. Like it was like a random application. I don't think that they knew anything. We it knew was anything. Pilot Pete season, wasn't it? Probably. Uh, it would be. <laughs> no. It would be. Uh, yeah. Peter. No, Peter. No, I think it was. Uh, no, I, Shocker. <laughs> Pilot Pete's already talked to Kelsey. I, I, I can't kidding. remember what year it was, but I remember my girlfriend had just applied me because I'd got out of a relationship and then I'd got out of another relationship uh, like kind of like a couple months before okay. his, um, his season of The Bachelor. Um, and I was just like, I don't know, like dating is hard. Like, I yeah. feel like I don't like, I didn't want to do the apps, things like that. And my girlfriend was like, you just have to apply for The Bachelor. Like, it'd be a fun experience. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I like, honestly, like half-assed it. Like I didn't submit pictures. Like I just kind of like wrote it in really quick as fast as I could, submitted it. And somehow I got an email and I was like, this isn't real. Like, How soon thereafter did you get an email? Um, I got an email. Honestly, I can't remember the t the difference. It was probably a couple of weeks, but I was really surprised. Like I was not expecting it at did all. Did you know Joy was going to be the Bachelor? I did not know. They asked me to watch. And so his season of the Bachelorette was just coming out, mm -hmm. and they asked me to watch it and tell them who I liked from it. And I said Joey. And so who I else did you say? <laughs> Our boy Dotton. <laughs> The full circle. Yeah. All four of us were on the dance floor. Yeah, there we go. Like, well, I, was I thought real. that they just seemed like the most genuine guys, yeah, yeah. Um, in my opinion, and like some like just like really great guys. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm embarrassed. It's not embarrassing. <laughs> I love it. I think it's yeah. great. Yeah. Dotton and I, I think I mean, if Jerry anyone. and I have the same time. <laughs> yeah. If anyone watched that season and if anyone ever hung out with me and Dotton, like we we do have a very similar demeanor <laughs> in that stance. We're just yeah, completely different people at the same yeah, time, too. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, so I just interviewed Sheridan and Dotton and, and it was such a great, and it was a deep interview. It's coming in a, in a week, either next Monday or the week, Monday following. So yeah. everyone stay tuned. One of the things we talked about, obviously she's a therapist. We got in the weeds about yes. like, just like being like, I was like, what was your clinical take as a therapist of like everything you're seeing the people like, cause of course there's so many emotional swings. Like how would yeah. you diagnose it? Like to hear her take as a yeah. professional is interesting. So I talked to Dot about it and I'm teasing it a little bit, but he's like, man, it's just like, it's like a big dick measuring stick out. <laughs> Everyone's like, take your dicks out, act like you're that big. And I'm like, well, Dot, that's why you win. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah like, exactly. That's sure what won. he had going. That's what no, he had going. He is an absolute beauty. But okay, so you think it's going to be Joey and Kelsey, or Joey, oh geez, Joey and Dot, <laughs> yeah. and you end up going on the show. Yeah. To, le to go on to the show, did you have to talk to your employer? Did they tell you you'll have your job back? Did they tell you you have to leave your job? What did it look like? Yeah, I told my boss once it started getting serious of like interviewing, I was like, hey, I've been interviewing for The Bachelor. I was like, I might be going on. Um, I was like, obviously, I really love my job and I would, I want to continue working here. Like, do you think that we can make that work? I, could, yeah. I was like, it could be a week. It could be, you know, plus. Like, I don't know how long I'll be there. I was like, I'll probably be back in a week. Like, you won't have to worry. Yeah. My boss was very supportive. She was like, we want you to, you know, do this. This is a really cool opportunity for you. She fully supported me. I, so I like left and I was gone for two months and then I came back and I went straight back to work and yeah, she, she was just like happy to have us back, <laughs> have me back. She was really, yeah, I don't know. I was like very grateful with like my support with my, with my work. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. We'll talk about what work looks like today. So stay yeah. tuned to that. But Joey, let's get into your journey here, right? <laughs> so I get it. Joey and I met in Nashville yep. through Mr. Dr. 
by Mr. Dr. Ian Doctor, Moore, get it right. Dennis. You know, <laughs> let's get it right. We're golf and we have a good time. You and I connect. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to get out to Hawaii at some point. And then you DM me and you're like, hey, there's this casting director. I don't know if it's real or not. <laughs> like, does this sound legit? Do you know this name? And I was like, no, I have no idea who that is. And then called the person I do know. And they're like, oh, that person's great. We just hired them. This is legit. So they just found you through your DMs then. It's still today. Uh, it, it, I don't know. I don't know what happened because it was actually not even a casting director. It was a producer. And he's like one of the main producers on the show right now. Like he's one of the, the main people that deals with all of the cast when they're going through. He always goes to the end. Like one of our favorite people, Patrick. Yeah. And Wait, he, but was he, he wasn't there he when was, I was on when then, right? he, he was on, okay. I think his he's second, newer. he was on his second God. season, I think when he did it. And from what I've been told, like they obviously part of their whole entire situation is they're supposed to sometimes find talent. Yeah. And I think I was like private at the time. I don't really remember what it was. <laughs> but if you know Patrick, which <laughs> anyone on the show that on the last couple of years do, like if you talk to Patrick, I ask him like, how'd you find me? He's like, yeah, I don't know. Like yeah. that's yeah. his response. Like, he, has no idea. he has no idea how he found me. He just DM me and we had the funniest phone call. And he was great. And I then I called you and I said, can you figure out if this is real before yeah. I actually decide if I want yeah. to do this? But and then Patrick was someone that I like had multiple interviews with on the show, like someone that was part of the experience. Yeah. So my thing He's was great. so amazing that like the person that also found me was a part of my entire experience, too. That is nuts. Do yeah. you remember like when you and I going back when you and I first met, we played golf that day in Nashville Anything specific? Because a lot of people, when I ask them, like, oh, what questions? Like, how'd you guys know each other? Anything you remember from that yeah. time? And you got any stories that maybe I don't I even know? I think the biggest thing for me was I I knew we were supposed to play golf, if mm -hmm. you don't forget, like 10 other times, right? Because okay. I have golf with Ian a ton of times. And so every I, didn't time, know, I didn't even know yeah, that. Yeah, so like we were supposed to play one time at Greystone. There was like multiple okay. times where <laughs> I'm always playing with Ian, and he's yeah. like, I got a fourth. It's going to be my buddy Jason. Yeah. And then you always backed out. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> cause he's, cause he's a busy <laughs> guy. He's got a podcast. <laughs> he's got all these Shit, other things I'm going back. on. Oh, so I think man. there was maybe like three or four times you're supposed to golf, and then you mm -hmm. just didn't make it. But this was one of the last ones. And the crazy thing was it was as you knew like a month before i moved to hawaii yep and then i meet you and i was like damn this guy's got a familiar face like why do i feel like i know who this person is yeah and of course we're like walking through hermitage clubhouse and someone stops you and asks yeah. for a picture and i was <laughs> and i i remember i came up to you and, and you i think you love this i was like who the hell are you like <laughs> did I, you I, I, I was asked I was like I what, what is this and you're like yeah. i was on this show and blah yeah. blah blah and then we just went on to have like a great round and i yeah. think you just had a good time because we were with Ian and Mike, who were just good boys. And I just remember that you were so inviting to me right away. Oh, and we just had that. a really good day. Yeah. And it just was a natural thing at the end when you were asking me what I was doing and trying to get to know me. Yeah. And you said that you might want to come to Kauai sometime. So yeah. you just asked for my Instagram and we connected because we didn't yeah. even have our numbers at no, that time. No, we didn't have numbers. At we time. just followed yeah. each other on Instagram. So yeah. even when I DM'd you, I was like, this guy's not going to respond. I mean, yeah, he's got yeah, 900,000 yeah. followers. Yeah. Like, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out to this guy and he's going to be like, not even responding. So I'm going to have to go. This is fraud. I'm going to end up like giving my social security number to someone that's trying to fraud me i didn't even know what was happening when i was applying so yeah. the fact that you responded the fact that you took that phone call with me to like get me prepped for the show yeah. like you are a big part of why all this happened because i oh, wouldn't have been nice. able to do this if i couldn't have talked to you and get some understanding yeah. of what this whole entire experience was going to be like yeah i appreciate that it was yeah i remember that day actually because i lived like the, our, the last house I lived in was backed up to the course that we played yeah. at. I was having a really tough day that day. I remember it. And when I came to that group, I was like, I just don't want to deal with anybody. And I was like, wait a second. These are great guys. Yeah. And you, I mean, just the banter, all everyone's energy. And it like totally turned that day around. <laughs> and here you are all these couple of years later, life has changed around. I'm very thankful we met before. Thankful for our friendship mm -hmm. and so excited for what you got going on and what the future looks like. But let's talk about you get off the show. I want to ask you just only one gossip question about charity season. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Promise it's only one. <laughs> In the fantasy suite. At any capacity, do you talk about careers, money, what future would look like in that capacity? 100%. You did? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I think... That's uh, a rare answer I get. That's yeah, why I asked. I, it was more... Um, I mean, and, and we talked about this too. It's like, it's important to understand what you're trying to 
to, to, to see what's next. Because I think anytime you get into this world, you have to ask the question of what it's going to be like to be in a public relationship. Yeah. And that conversation naturally pivots into, well, what do you want to do with all of this? Mm -hmm. And no one comes into this if they're in it for, as the quote unquote, the right, right reasons. reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one comes into this to 20 try years to, plus. To, that, that yeah, no one comes crushing. into this that does well to try to turn it into something else but you would be a fool not to at least have that conversation to see like, what do you want to do? And for that time, like Charity was saying, I wanna get back into therapy. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was saying, yeah, I, tennis is going to be a part of my life. So mm -hmm. we didn't have a deep conversation. I think it was just more the surface level, but I yeah. think it was also important. And I did the same thing with her when we were in ours to be like, did what, you? Yeah, what, yeah, what do you want to do? Do you want to be in the public light? Do you wanna shy away from it? Do we want to try to figure out ways to get back to our normal life? If we can't, how are we going to pivot and do that? So you, you two talk, you two talked about the fantasy yeah. suite. You got into like the. I, the I want to say it was at least an hour conversation. Yeah. No or, way. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it, and I said pretty much like, I'm open to it as long as it doesn't like taint our relationship. Like as uh, long, as long as it doesn't affect our relationship. Like I'm open to you know doing things like this and being open to the public. I'll say this: that was. I would say on the show, one of the most important moments for me wow. was asking that question and understanding what this all was. Because when you're in the position that I am, you always question, are you doing this for some other reason? Is sure. this and that? And she gave the most natural answer that I have ever heard. And she said it pretty much word for word there. But I, I, what I remembered was, I will be open to whatever this brings. But as soon as we start doing this for other yeah. people, mm -hmm. I want out. Like I'm not yeah. doing this unless it's for us. And that was when I was like, you're in this for me. Yeah. And now I can actually fully see what this is going to bring. Yeah. But at least I know at the end of the day that we're going to come back and know that this is actually more important what we are trying to build here together. That yeah. is so intuitive and like years beyond because I think what happens is most people do not talk about this in yeah. fantasy suite. And weirdly enough, it's, you know, it's the intimacy, it's the physical connection, it's the beautiful show that brings the relationships mm -hmm. together. And I think a lot of them are split up from the mayhem after, yeah. right, right? And I think the idea of being like, we can do whatever we want to pursue professionally, yeah. let's do it. But as long as our personal foundation is always the priority exactly. and stronger than that. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you guys were doing that in the fantasy suite, like talking about that yeah. is huge. Because another thing that a common question out there is, listen, I know it, I've seen it, I'm friends with people, I've experienced it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a lot of this, the, the success rate of going through this and then getting across the line is tough. And yeah. so a lot of the big questions are like, how and what can you do knowing that to beat those odds, to be yeah. the couple that everyone is so vested in. And I think it's conversations literally like that yeah. years beyond that people aren't having that get you to that point. Yeah. People don't see them either, right? Because that's not what the TV show is all about. Like they're yeah. not going to understand. No one gets to see yeah. that conversation. No one gets to get like an insight into my brain about every step I took through this to try to make sure that when she left that she had zero doubts that I was fully invested in her. Like mm -hmm. you can't, you can't ever capture or understand that um and i get it like we knew coming in we get that we're breaking odds to try to be a successful couple in this yeah. uh we've said multiple times we wish we met in a bar like that would yeah. have been the more ideal <laughs> yeah. situation yeah. uh but we haven't and we would have never met each other if it wasn't for this yeah. so for that we are so grateful and now we're just doing our best to navigate a very weird situation a very yeah. weird, very but weird that's what situation my dad said and i think that it like just like your dad my dad said Stunned. that he was like <laughs> don't just like, say your dad <laughs> keep talking but but that guy Mark Anderson. My mom's ready to like marry your dad and she's happily married for 40 years. I'm like, mom, take a chill no, he, pill. He said that too. He was like, y'all would have never met otherwise. Like, I'm so yeah. happy for y'all. I'm so yeah. glad that you did this. And he was like, and you got out with, with Joey and he was like, y'all would have never met otherwise and y'all seem amazing together. So I don't know, that made me really happy. It's like, obviously, you know. The key word in all of this, I think, is perspective. Like, yeah. you yeah. have to try to change your mindset to understand that you can always find the wrong things mm -hmm. in this. Yeah. But if you can get the right perspective, Perspective and be grateful for how this actually happened. Yeah, there's good things that come yeah. from it. So we've and just been trying to have a good perspective. Yeah. Yeah, it's the perfect sure. disposition. We're gonna get into what's now and how you're navigating it. But before we do, I want to ask you, you. You've just mentioned a bunch of times like how this has changed your life, like how grateful you are, how amazing it's been, and thank God for it. But 
you look at a situation like what we're seeing from your season, right? You have Maria and Daisy who were offered the opportunities, mm-hmm. who have explained in depth why they passed. My question to you then is, at any capacity or any time when you were offered the bachelor, did you think, for some of the reasons we've heard recently, did that ever cross your mind? Or for you, was it like, this is for me, I'm in? No, 100%. I, I definitely questioned if I was going to do it. Did you? Uh, yeah. I, I, what I was never, the biggest factor? I think... To be fully transparent, the success rate was scary. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that I am smart enough to realize that I, I question how can I actually have a very strong relationship if I'm going to be trying to figure out the relationship on TV. She's going to have to look back and watch it. Um, I think another big part of it is leads usually get very scrutinized in this position, and um, I didn't want to be in that spot where mm. um, I, I guess I kind of came unscathed from charity season. Like I obviously was just myself, and I felt really lucky that I was able to portray who I was and, and, and fully give everything I could. So to get back into that world again and be under that spotlight, all mm-hmm. that was scary. So I, I don't think anyone, if anyone was in my role and was doing it and said they didn't think about it or see, seem like it wasn't a good idea, I think they're lying to themselves because you have to. You know what? And I don't have any of this prepared now. Now that you're saying this, it's jogging my memory. When you and I talked, we did. We yeah. talked about that. And we, it's for what I think we first said was they haven't picked like the fan favorite that people want to be the bachelor. And I think I quoted to you since Ben. And I think we talked and we were like, but what happened to Ben? Ben was the perfect guy in the bachelorette. And of course, everyone knows was the great bachelor, like one of the best. Yeah. But we talked about they still with the season, I think it was like titled the perfect Ben, like a perfect 10 and how yeah. it kind of set it up <laughs> yeah. like there's going to be some drama here. So you were, I remember you saying like, I don't think like they're even going to, I don't know if they're going to pick me. And even if they do is, you know, I, I kind of did one show and it, I got out on skate. Do I want to do another? And you did it. You defied all odds. I, I did my best. best. I did my best. I have said it publicly, the greatest bachelor of all time. You have dealt with, I, I would say... <laughs> <laughs> Every bachelor that's gone on this show has like they come out with warrior wounds. Yeah, I would say you got paper cuts. I, at I, best. I, I was you very, have had a good run, my man. I was very lucky. I think I came out uh, probably as as good as you could. But at the end of the day, the reason why I think I'm the luckiest because I'm with her. That that's uh, always what I say. It's the truth. Yeah. I, the, my is, my goal has always so, been. It is so true. And my so. goal has always been. <laughs> if I was going to do this, I was so scared I wasn't going to have a real connection. I was so scared that I wasn't going to be able to like feel confident enough in the end to get engaged. And I had zero doubts on that day. And I wanted that feeling fully because I know how important that is. And that was the reason why I was like, I have zero regrets. This was the best decision I ever made. To have that feeling on that last day is the most important thing. Yeah. And that's scary in its own right because you, only, you don't pick these people. Like yeah. You don't do anything. You just show up and you just yeah. hope that they're going to have that feeling. And the fact that it brought me Kelsey, I mean, that's that's that is the reason why I feel like I was the luckiest bachelor. For that sure. is beautiful, and it's so pure. One thing I was going to ask you, I've never asked you this before, and you could just say pass on this one, honestly. <laughs> but I think about like Bad. the Claire, the Claire, because well, for me it was so like okay, spoiler alert. Joey gets off the season, we talk, and he's like, "You're going to love her." She's amazing. Yeah. You're going to know from the second. Yeah. I knew from the second. Like, you were very confident. If, people, yeah. if but, people knew before and you watched it, you would have saw how much Kelsey was there from the beginning, yeah. for sure. And that's in, like, in your eye. And, like, obviously, there's a story to the show and stuff, so you see all these other areas. But, like, that's how you had mentioned it to me. One thing I never asked you is, like, you saw a season like Claire Crawley, mm-hmm. where with her and Dale, she was like, I'm done, it's over. Yeah. Like, was there ever a time during the show that – but you didn't – you just said you, you just had a, one of the – purest moments you two had was behind the scenes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at fantasy suite in that deep conversation but was there ever going to be a claire crawley moment here where you were like i'm done with the show i got i got my girl let's wrap this up i i if i would have to guess i would say every season there is probably a claire moment i would say every season there is a moment where the lead is pretty pretty sure that they know who it is maybe midway through Mm. but then you have to be realistic because there are so many important factors that are set up to the credit of the show that you need to go through like there's no way i could have ended it without her meeting my family 
Yeah. And you can't do that to the end. There's no way I could have done it until I saw her family and seen yeah. how we had a, a dynamic. So it is difficult when you feel as strong as you do. And then you're trying to keep your mind open when you feel strong about someone. But on top of it, you would be doing a disservice to everyone that's there, a disservice to the whole process of this if you don't at least see every step out. And I struggled with it because it is difficult to bring other people along while you're trying to figure that out. But I did the best I could. I tried my best to be honest through it. I think everyone saw that. But it would it would be wrong to end it early without doing the most important things, which is family to me. And those come at the end. Perfectly yeah. said. Yeah, I don't think that. I think that like if you would end it early and tried to get like, engaged middle of time, like I, I you would have right. had to meet my family. Like I don't yeah. think that I could have like said yes to an engagement unless he met my family and I got that. Like yes, like I. Love, I love you so much and all this, but also it's like I, <laughs> oh, my so family cute. means so much to me as well, you know. Yeah, and their opinion yeah. does matter a lot. To I me. had to, I asked I asked Mark's hand. I really asked for her hand through yeah. Mark, and like I had to do that. Yeah. So you asked for no Mark's way. hand. I asked for Mark. <laughs> we all actually, ask for Mark's hand. Let me look right in that camera. Wants Mark's I would hand. ask for Mark Anderson's hand. I'm looking right in that camera. I would ask for Mark Anderson's hand. That's the sweetest man that's ever existed. <laughs> <He's> the best. <laughs> God, this guy's just taking over the whole podcast. <laughs> Uh, but I, yeah, honestly, I think like, I think Claire's great and Dale's great. I've got to meet them both yeah. individually, but also you look at that situation. They did that, and uh, with what you just said, that's obviously not the process they went through, and saying it didn't work out for them. So, like, yeah. per- perfectly said, perfectly yeah. said. All right, so you guys finished the show. Congratulations, you're in love. Yeah. Life is good. <laughs> We're you. done with the bachelor <laughs> drama. Let's get into real life here, yeah. Joey. You got pretty much 99.9% of things going for you. But if I read like any negative comments out there, which was next to nothing, one of them's like, what the hell is this dude just like live with his sister? Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> so you finish. You live with your sister, which by the way, she is she's way cool. Best. She's way cooler she's than, you. than me. She's, she's so, better than she's you amazing. in every way. What is it called? Cooler cooler older sister syndrome or something yeah. like that? Yeah, the sister only, syndrome. You're, you're, cool you're syndrome. only cool if you have a cooler older sister. Yeah. So that, well, I, she every part cooler. of me is accredited to Carly. Yeah. So she's that's a good. beautiful, fun, kind, way cool. Cooler amazing. than you. Yeah, I'm surprised the show didn't find her before you, honestly. <laughs> they, they, I bet you she they wish they did. Yeah, they wish they did. And by the way, the brother, brother-in-law is an absolute oh, gem. Oh, Zach's an absolute awesome. gem. Yeah. It's funny. Zach and I are so similar, and Carly and Joey are so similar. Yeah, We're like, it's up. it's so it funny. Like, perfectly. Zach and I have the same humor and everything, yeah. and they're more chill, but so fun. I love <laughs> it's it. Funny. It's beautiful. Yeah. All right, so we finished the show. Yeah. Yeah. You tell Kelsey I live in my sister's basement. No, I'm just kidding. No, he's got the upstairs room. I'm just messing around. Kelsey, you you're in New Orleans. How many roommates do you have? Two. Okay, you have two yeah. roommates. You obviously have to think not only like personally what we're doing, but yeah. you're thinking professionally, future outlook. Yeah. You decide to go to New Orleans at this time. Walk me through what that decision looked like and why. Yeah, I was still working. And so I was like, you know, I got to go back to my, like, I'm not quitting my job. Yeah. So, and he was just living with his sister. So I was like, you can move in with me. I had a real, I have a, I have a very big room. And uh, my roommates were all in. They're like, we can't wait to get to know Joey. And it's kind of like a new girl situation. Yeah, I'm on a, but, I'm on a like comedy sketch right now. I feel like I'm I'm full on in a new girl situation. Yeah. <laughs> There's three oh, girls and we, one Joey. Why? I'm just like sitting there in the middle. Why of all these got We've got he's got, got Roman. Got Roman the this board. is he's a, a modern dog. day friends. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, it really this is, is. A, as a manager, I'm like, film it's this. Fu- shit. It's funny when their boyfriends are over too. We're just like, it really feels like friends. It's a it's a great atmosphere to walk into. I do think people forget that. In my situation, like moving to my sister's was strategic. Like I was living in Hawaii. There's no way I could be living there with the amount that I was going to be doing with press going from New York to L.A. So I was like, I need to either go find a new place or I have to get into a place that's going to let me be able to travel pretty easily on the mainland. So Carly was amazing. So was Zach. They just opened up their home to me and pretty much made their guest room Joey's room. Um, And that was awesome. But for her side, like... When you go on the show, you have to remember that they come on knowing that you have a one in 32 chance of getting engaged. So I I was literally doing the statistics like every single week. Like, oh, I have this percent like odds of like making it. Like you you (laughs) talked about that in your first book. You gave me that whole breakdown when I won the Bachelorette. So for her side, (laughs) it would have been wrong of me to be like, we need to get you out of what your life was because she dropped her whole life to be a part of this. And I knew that regardless of what was going to happen. Happen, my life was going to have to change and go somewhere else. Yeah. So it was a no-brainer to do New Orleans. So you're you then 
all, like your residence right now is in New Orleans. Yes. Okay. And then, so you are in a three bedroom place. It's four bedroom. Four bedroom. But and then you two people. share, I guess, well, this is, yeah. we get in the numbers here. So you four bedroom, <laughs> yeah. you share a room then. Yep. But we what, share a room, yeah. And do you have like, sto- like where's all your, do you have storage? Like, yeah, I have a huge stuff? closet. She's, and it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a huge You're closet. The best. A huge the, closet I that has 90% closet. of her clothes in it. I got like a I little. I cleared out a lot for you. I think if you look on my Instagram, I had a Joey corner in the basement pretty much. Yeah, no, in our, our spare room, we have a lot of like yeah, storage they got stuff storage. there. Okay. And yeah. Car- Carly and Zach's been great. Like I still have a lot of my stuff there. Yeah. Because like, yeah. we've been going to Philly so much. Yeah. And yeah. Traveling that. His his winter clothes are in Philly. They don't. Yeah. They don't need to be in okay. New Orleans. So you got storage in Philly <laughs> yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Four bedroom. What do you pay pay for rent? Um, I pay with utilities probably like twelve hundred. Okay. Yeah. So you guys are like, this is the most like humble thing in the world. You yeah. guys are sharing the bedroom and the closet yeah. in New Orleans with your three other roommates. We're gonna get into what you do professionally. Before we do, you tell your other three three roommates that uh, America's sensation Joey <laughs> is not my fiance and he's moving in with us. Yeah. What are they like? Are, what do they say? What's the they dynamic were like? They were so excited. They How many bathrooms him. are there? There's three. Okay, yeah. Joey, we're, you're we're, like sharing, we're sharing a bathroom with our, our Hannah. friend Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> Hannah's very clean. She's but clean. Honestly, She's we great. joke though. Like honestly, I think it makes sense to be in New Orleans because we have been yeah. traveling so much. It's like that's our base. Okay, back. so you're traveling a lot, right? So then you're not seeing the roommates as much, but yeah, it's so, got. I mean, it's got to be an interesting dynamic. Yeah, but oh, we joke like, that it's I like our being, closet. Man. It's like it's like our closet right now because we've been traveling so much. Like that's just like where our clothes are and where we unpack and repack to go to the next place right we, now. We can share one bad. story of how crazy it's been in this month alone was that we uh again it goes back to Mark. God bless that man's soul. Uh we he drove us all the way from St. Louis. Can we back. just make Mark like the next batch? I feel Literally. like we should <laughs> just stop the batch. He doesn't even stop need to be called just making the batch. Just, <laughs> <geez. laughs> that, that's that, all we want. Just, just put him in there. Uh but he drove us all the way from St. Louis to New Orleans. Orleans, the kindest thing ever. And then we get there, I think it was at 12 o'clock. It was midnight, yeah. We got there at midnight and we had to get in a car for a New York City event with ABC at 4 a.m. So that was our last stint in New Orleans in May was we had four hours. Four so hours you to want to talk about our closet, like we literally got to her room, unpacked one bag because we were coming from Hawaii in a ho- and, and a wedding. Yeah. So we unpacked the, I unpacked the suit, the swimsuits put in stuff for a New York City event. Yeah. And then we had a wedding in New Jersey. Then we and went then to Portugal. Portugal. So like, oh my God. And we just, we've been living out of a suitcase this month. Yeah. So it's it's That was our definitely, one time, I think we went to New Orleans in yeah. May. Our goal was to get hours. Our goal is to be able to spend a little more time there. I for do sure. feel like this is like literally a, a sitcom here. Like you yeah. two in a place with three, like three of your girlfriends. Yeah, and they are like are the they single? Be- are they dating? I no, don't know why I'm so have, interested in they this. They both have boyfriends. Um, but do they want to know amazing. what? They're like, all right, tell us about your life. Like, we want to know everything. Like, Wait, what? Do they like want to know everything? They, I mean, literally, whenever I am home, like I was home um, before we came here and Joey was gone, but like Hannah, my she's one of my best friends, and Claire, like, as well, she's one of my best friends. Literally, we were just like hanging out twenty four seven. Like Hannah was just in my room nonstop, asking all the questions. Ta- we to even know half the time we weren't even talking. It's just like we love being around each other and each other's presence. And like sometimes she's asking questions. She's like, "Oh yeah, what about this?" It was funny. Joey was joking earlier about me asking Hannah all the questions whenever I first yeah. got there. I like literally asked her like five questions within like four seconds. Yeah, didn't even uh, give her <laughs> a chance boom, boom, to respond. I didn't even give her a chance to. I was like, "Oh this, oh and this, and this, and this, and this," yeah. and then she's like, "Oh." oh. Like, because oh shit, we were catching up. Zamboni aisle three. Zamboni. <laughs> yeah, it's. I think the main thing is, is we just been moving so much that it's definitely a quick catch it up. Makes every sense. Yes. All yeah. right. So then you're going to New York City timeline. When are you just, moving to New York City? Yeah, we'll we'll. we'll um, sure. I've always wanted. Um, I've always wanted to live there. I I joke. I'm like, I feel like it's like. I've watched too much Sex in the City or mm-hmm. something, where it's just like it was always a dream of mine. Too many like '90s rom coms or something. Get ready, New York, Joey. Where yeah. I'm like, I've always Sex wanted. Sex in the City. Yeah. Sex in the City. <laughs> no, I mean, I, we were really excited for New York. I would always say that uh, when I was doing press, I would go back between New York and LA, and I, yeah. I thought New York was amazing. Yeah. Like, and it's close to family for me, so that's, that's we great. know that's where we want to end up and do a, a few years there. We're not sure exactly when yet. Okay. Uh, we know that we're going to be leaving New Orleans sometime in August. We're trying okay. to get a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be doing after that sure so it's 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 up in the air but i think i would be shocked that by the end of this year we're not living in okay New York so City. next yeah. six months the goal yeah, is for to sure. be there yeah. okay so cool. sometime by the end this year we'll definitely my lease ends in like end of july though yeah. so yeah, okay we'll so see. then there's, we, might, there's, we might have some in between stuff we're still trying to figure it out because again we have so much going on right now but yeah 
if we're not living in New York by Christmas time, I'd be pretty shocked. Okay, so my I'd natural cry. question is then, <laughs> if you moved to New Orleans because Kelsey had a job and you're now going to New York City because your lease ends, what is going on with your job? Yes, yeah, so this is my unemployment announcement. <laughs> no, da 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 Breaking no news. Job now. Um, yeah, I, I had to quit. We've just been so busy. I yeah. felt like it wasn't fair to my job, you know, juggling between all of this and not being able to focus on the project that was at hand. So I ended up quitting. My boss was very kind about it all. And she was like, if you ever want to come back, please let us know. Um, but yeah, whenever we moved to New York, I plan on picking back up project management because I just love, I love what I do. Okay. Yeah. But talk to me about this. So you guys are traveling a lot. Yeah. There was, you know, this whole world. I remember when you and I had talked, you're like, I don't know about all this. Like yeah. it's a lot. But so now tell me about like, what do you, when you think about the professional side, the financial side, also what people might not know about you is like how, at least this is my interpretation. You're, you're very analytical. You're a planner. Yes. Like you're, you know, you have comfort in knowing financial stability. Yes. You think about this stuff thoroughly. I would say majority of people that I meet, especially that come off the show and all these things come, do not think like that. Yeah. So that is, it's a kudos to you. But for you then to quit your job, obviously, I'm, I got to imagine you're thinking through this pretty thoughtfully. So yeah. talk to me about like what the professional career side was like for you to be like, okay, I'm going to take the leap of faith. And what does that look like? I think the leap of, I don't know, I feel like, I mean, part of it was that Joey was like, no matter what, like, I'll, I'll help you if you need help in any sense, but, I'll, which, you know, gave me a little bit of financial security, because I was like, oh my God, am I just going to like, what am I going to do for these couple of months of, yeah. you know, all this craziness, because also it's like, I was on the show for two months, I had to pay rent and all this stuff where I wasn't getting paid for two months, and, and then I went back to work, and then it was, you know, I was like, I, it almost felt like I was catching up with like my fi finances in mm -hmm. my mind. Um, I do like, I like to like invest and do things like that, but it's like with like actual, I feel like liquid cash. It's like, it's stressful for me. It's like, I feel like I need to have like a certain amount to feel secure financially. Is it for you? Like when you think about it, it's like you need a month of expenses, is it two months or is it a certain dollar amount? Like how? No, in your yeah, brain I think has... it's like a certain amount of months okay. where it's okay. like, that would make me feel good. So what, what like, is what makes you comfortable? Like how many months do you want saved ideally? At least like three. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's, at least, I think that's like, a good number too. Yeah. Cause it's well with the show and stuff, you know, that was two months uh, on its own. Um, and then also you have to buy all these dresses and all the clothes and all these things. And it was stressing me out. But thankfully I had, I have amazing friends and they, we had a packing party and they all brought clothes over Aww, and they helped me I've like pick out that. all my outfits. And we literally had like an, my iPad and like all these like pictures of my outfits on the iPad, wow. like on like a slideshow, like kind of thing where we were like, these are all my outfits. And it was really that's fun. Adorable. But, yeah. <laughs> it's adorable. Like yeah. Packing party. Yeah, packing party. That's genius. Yeah. And they all cried. They were like, acting like I was going to war or something. I was like, I'll be back in <laughs> a week. Her off. Yeah, literally. It was so funny. But, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. What was the question? Well, just about just about like what's not like what's next in the decision. You <laughs> left you, your job what are you for Why someone who's you like you that's a planner. Like yeah, that's yeah. a big well, move. Well, now I think that we're open to like all of this like new world stuff to yeah. me, where it's like you know the 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 brand deals and yeah. things where those are really exciting, and especially if it's something that you know we feel passionate about. I think yeah. that's what I feel. It's like I'm not going to like represent a brand that like I don't actually of course. you know use. Yeah, yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. But so you're taking a leap of faith then. Say like We're let's let's give faith. it a shot. How yeah. long are you giving yourself? And Joey's give, my security blanket. Joey's um. a good he's a good security blanket to have. <laughs> yeah. What is like give me give me like a timeline when you think about the career the finance like okay, yeah. I'm going to give this a shot cuz I'm so sick and tired of the people I see sometimes in your comments be like, oh, what do you just travel for a living? You yeah. do this, you do that. It's such projection. It's like you it, like yeah. it's very clear out there that there's a huge career in financial opportunity yeah. when you're in this space. Yeah. If you don't see it now, wake up. It's 2024. It yeah. is yeah. what it is. And stop projections. Or where's your job? Well, they're giving something a shot. Yeah. When you think about it, especially as a planner and a project manager, like yeah. you're managing this project. Mm -hmm. How long of a runway are you giving yourself before you're like, I'm going to test it, I'm going to try it, and if this doesn't work out, I'm going back to project management? Yeah, I would say... Well, I mean, I want to go back to project management regardless. Okay, like, I cool. always want that security blanket, and I yeah. want that career, like, for me, um, regardless if it's, like, full-time or part-time, because okay. with, like, the opportunities that come. But I would say, like, if I don't fully like it after six months, like, I'd probably quit. Six, six months, months to a year. I think okay. that I would, like, if I do, if it doesn't feel right for me, like... 
Yeah. I would okay. Just say, Six it's months to a year. Yeah. We're going to have to have it on your part two in 12 months from All now. Right. We're going to do a state of the union. How is the business of yeah. Kelsey Anderson <laughs> right, going? Right. Yeah. All right, Joey, you, you got a lot going on here. Mm-hmm. You go on The Bachelorette. You become The Bachelor, the mm-hmm. most successful bachelor in a long, long time. Now you got the wind of your sails. What does it look like? Do you think in, you know, are you thinking tennis? Are you thinking like, where's the direction of your career going? Like, what's it look like in your brain? Uh, the true answer is I don't fucking know. <laughs> Fair. It's uh, it's very true. it's very interesting to be in this position because uh, as much as you can try to prep yourself for it, because you go and you're the bachelor and you're like, okay, like this is going to bring opportunity. Everyone talks to you about it from all sides, uh, yeah. from people that have been on the show, from people that weren't on the show, from people that are in the show. They're like, what do you think you want to do with this? And you never prep yourself before to like actually think if I ever get a platform, what am I going to do with Mm -hmm. it? At least I was never in that position. I never thought that I would be in this spot. Um, So for me, my brain goes in so many different places. Tennis has given so much to me. I think I'd be crazy not to have tennis be a part of my life, but also that is something I can always pick back up at a later time because I put so much energy into it. So Mm -hmm. that's somewhere my brain goes. Um, I love doing this. I love podcasts. I love talking to people. I love engaging with people. I think tennis was like a vice for me at the end of the day to be able to connect with people. So that gets me excited. Um, I love sports. I'm like, maybe I go try and get into the sports broadcasting side of things. So your brain goes in so many places. But for me right now, the end of the day is I'm open and I have no idea what I'm doing yet. And I'm (laughs) trying to enjoy this time. But I am not as analytical as Kelsey, but still on that side of man, this is weird not knowing what's coming next. It, um, just because I'm okay out. right now doesn't mean that I really want to just get comfortable. Yeah. Um, so I, I battle with it and I'm, I'm working through it because, yeah, I, I don't like the idea of technically being unemployed for the last year. Like, that's weird. That's the longest time in my life because I am employed, Yeah. but I'm not at the same time too. Right. This was this like a kind of, we could take this out if you want, but this was a conversation you had, I think it was a month ago. You're talking about like I don't know what's next. I'm freaking nope. out a little bit. Like what's and I think the basis that if you took the root of our conversation, and I think Kelsey, you and I have had this one too. <laughs> it's like where is my identity? Yeah. Like how do I yeah. connect my identity? Because professional life dictates a lot of our other endeavors. And I, I also t- I said, Joey, where is this coming from? And you said, well. I'm starting to hear a lot of feedback about like, what do you travel for a living? And now it's getting in my head. I don't know. So all right, take a, take a, take a slow point, like hit the brakes. I said, financially, has it been a pretty good year for you? Last yeah. 12 months, you're like, probably the best I've had. Okay. Um, did you find like the love of your life? Yeah. Does America love you right now, Joey? And you're like, no, stop. I'm like, all right, well, I'll say it. America loves you. Okay, so now you have a platform. You have the best thing that's happened to you, which is Kelsey. You've made more money than you made in a while. You, you know, you have the wind at your back. I'm like, so what's the actual problem? And I think you came full circle, and you're like, I think there actually isn't. It's just all these people that are like expecting this something from me, and I feel like I don't have an answer. So my question is as you're thinking through this and people that are listening and maybe some people are listening that also are in your comments, like, what do you travel for a living? Are you just going to be an influencer? Like, what's your response? Because of course you're not going to just go into a comment and be like, no, like what's your, both of your responses to when you think about your professional side and people are saying these things, how do you respond? What does it look like? I don't know. I, I, I like to ignore it more than anything else. But to answer your question, when you always say like, what's your problem about it? I don't think my problem is now. Now's fine. My problem is thinking about what's three to five years from. Yeah, yeah. that's my problem because yeah. I because I know that this yeah. is this is a moment, um, and I'm I'm happy with it being a moment. We both kind of are okay with it being that way. Like we don't want this identity of being on this show to be our life, but we understand that we have people that have at least now been introduced to our lives, know who we are, and, are invested. and invested, and we want to be able to continue to be ourselves and and see if we can take something from this. Because as you said earlier, like. You'd be foolish not to think about all the opportunities that come with it. Yeah. So I think that I just think of trajectory. I think of trying to make the most of this. And my brain goes immediately, as I always do, I think 20 steps ahead. And yeah. I shouldn't because right now, if I just stay present, life's amazing. I'm, yeah. I should be yeah. the happiest person ever. 
And I am in some ways, but I'm not in others because I start thinking about the future. Yeah. Well, I think so many people will try and shame and blame you because yeah. they're, you're doing something that maybe not many people get the opportunity to do yeah. or they have an expectation that you should do it one way or that you should move in a certain direction. But a lot of it's external longing from their end or resentment that you have something they don't. And I think that's a perfect answer. Like just live in today. Yeah. And if you don't have the perfect answer at a bar of what do you do or what you can do in three, five years, that's fine. Yeah. Right now you're in a place where professionally and financially and also personally, you get to like live a little bit of a dream. So live mm -hmm. it. And what happens, happens. And if two years from now you got to go back and you're a project manager and you're a tennis pro, then you did it. And you have the yeah. best memories in the world. And if this takes you somewhere else and you don't have to, then you figure that out then. Yeah. But it's so many people like to just slime you with their yeah. shit and then try and have them dictate your direction. And I love that you're like, no, this is what we're going to do now. We'll see how it goes six months to a year and have reevaluate. Yeah. There's, a, there's one more thing because it's just on this and I want you to speak on it. But there was a video I saw the other day that I keep going back to. And it's people that live in the past are depressed. People that live in the future are anxious. People that live in the present are happy. Oh, I love that. That's the idea. Yeah. So if you, and I think I'm in yeah. living in the future and I'm anxious because of it yes. right now. Exactly. That's what it is. But and if when I we could, bring you back to the present, what more could you have? Yeah. Like, so yeah, I'm trying so yeah. hard to live in the present. Yeah. And because it's so I, much the, easier said it's, than I'm not done, worried right? about the past anymore, yeah. but I think I'm anxious because I'm thinking about the future right now. Exactly. So I'm trying to get in the present. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say like how you said like there's comments of like oh my gosh like how are y'all affording all of this? I was like yeah. I've never had so many people be so concerned about my finances. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's so funny like, it's to me. Nice, yeah, actually. I was like, well, thank you for that. <laughs> I was like, actually, um, but I don't know why I think that that's so funny. But I, I think that, I think for the most part, I do think that people are like actually just like asking the question, and like I think that for the most part, it comes from a good place. I do yeah. think that a lot of times people are like you know, just they're confused. Like they don't understand this world yeah. and neither do I fully. So yeah. it's like, we're on the same page, you know, like Rebecca or whoever you are. Like it's like, <laughs> it's like we're on the same page. I don't know what's going on either. Let me ask you this. Then. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to dig into that just for a second. And then I want to go into a fun little game yeah. I have, but, um, okay. They're asking about your financial future. Spoiler alert. A lot of these trips are paid for. Some of them are not. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you, you don't have to say anything. And a lot are, but right now, you guys have been very intentional with what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And you're very intentional about not jumping into brand deals and immediately like monetizing. It's, it, it's very thoughtful and it's smart. But the way you're doing it also is decreasing cash inflow today. Yeah. yeah. Right? Do you at all feel, and I know you guys both have saved and you've, you've had some opportunities, but do you feel any type of financial stress right now? Or are you not feeling any type of financial stress? It's where, like, when people say these questions, like, how are you affording it? You yeah. can either answer that, like, how are you affording it? Or are you feeling financial stress or not? I would say, honestly, if we combine our financials together, we yeah. are not stressed at the yeah. moment. Yeah. yeah. But I think that most importantly, as we keep talking about, if you think three to six months ahead, maybe we will be, right? No, so you like, won't. Yeah. We won't, but <laughs> we, I'm we, telling you. we won't, but I think it's more along the lines of that we, if you, if you think about if we get no more cash flow coming sure, in through sure. this yeah, in the and time, we have to right? Yeah. Survive off of yeah. what we have right now. Yeah, we're fine, but I, I we'll know that we'll be making that peanut we, butter sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> we're back fine. at Carly's. <laughs> yeah, back at Carly's. We're, Carly's that's our safety for you. <laughs> no, we're fine right now, and we're open to see what's coming. But yeah. I think it's more about that we want to make sure that we're going to set ourselves up. Here but also, in the we both are very capable of like. You can work at a tennis job, and I can I, work exactly. at a tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. You can go tomorrow. back. Easy. And that's yeah. what we're, that's I what think the trajectory is going to be huge and exciting, but uh, you know what? We'll see what that looks like. Let me yeah. ask you this. If either you could be on, we look at the future, look at career opportunities, you've been on reality shows, you've both done one on reality shows, you could be on one reality show, more of a rapid fire question. Yeah. Kelsey, we'll start with you. One reality show. What reality show would you be on? I would say maybe Big Brother just because I like um, competition. I like competitiveness. You'd kill and it because like, you would kill the social game yeah. and you would kill the strategy game, yeah, I feel like. I feel like I'd like just be friends yeah. with everybody. For anybody that doesn't <laughs> yeah. know, like if Kelsey goes into a bar, she'll meet 100 people, all 100 people are going to love her. <laughs> It's literally your personality. 
approachable, <laughs> down to earth, and funny is all hell. <laughs> what show would yours be? I'm gonna do something completely different. Throw a curveball. Uh, I'll go Survivor just because yeah. we've been watching we that a ton Survivor. recently. I didn't see that. Yeah, that's cool. We've been watching it just the last couple of days. I got a buddy back home that's obsessed with the show yeah. too. Uh, but I don't know. I just would love to go into that and see how I would do with it. Okay. That's all. Yeah. Like I, I, I just would love to see what it'd be like to be stuck on an island. And I just think it's one of those shows when you think about that. The format has been so successful for so long because yeah. it's just genius. It's just great. Yeah, you just I vote see you, man. You know, like you, you, you live in a life. You, you're like not a shoes guy. You no. want to, you want to be barefoot. You want to be on earth. I can see like spear a fish and be like, yeah. right, I'm gonna I last also think another. that they would kick him off early because they're like his social game's too good. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> you would be I'd dead. I'd lay low. All right, we're gonna play a little game. You guys. We're gonna play a little game. Two notepads, two pens. You can't see each other's answers. Part of it is going to be finance. The other Hi. part of it, oh, Luna's in the Luna. house. The other part of it is girl. going to be U.S. history. U.S. history. Joey. Joey needs a little restart. All and right. my first we book was called The Restart ball. Roadmap. We can All right, talk about history this. question number one. This is Kelsey versus Joey trading secrets okay. with Luna as our sidekick. Luna. Here's question number one, Joey, because... The RBG struggle was real, so we need to come back from that. Yeah, Here that we go. We've got some layups. Write it down right now. Who was our first president? You got five seconds. Five, four, three. I don't know if you can write two, it this quickly with what you're what, saying. Hurry up. Who was our first president? Kelsey, answer. What is that? George Washington. Is that, is that, oh my God. Is that George, wait, wait, wait. Verify. Let me see. I don't even know. Show if the that's camera. A word. Was that Barry I Washington? Don't know. That's George Washington. We're going to let it go. George Washington. Okay. All right. Question two. You guys each pass one point. Who is our current vice president? Our current? Current vice president. U.S. history with Joey and Kelsey 101. Oh, no. I know her name. Wait. Oh, no, Kel. <laughs> Why do I want to say? I met her. I know. Come, She's yeah. a sweetheart. Joey, go first. Show it. Show it, Joey. Joey's you got it. Harrison. Wait. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I know. You got Kamala. It, it's Kamala. Harrison now. Harrison. Wait. Okay. That, that, you just added a couple letters. It's, it's you just, got it. It's oh, good good points. That's two. Kam we'll Kamala Harris. We're going to call good it one. Try. The score right now is 1.95 to 2.0. Yeah. Yeah, All winning. right. Why Here. did I want to say Pamela? I, 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 if you said <laughs> Pamela Anderson, we would have ended it right you know, now. Well, you're still at Barstool from last night. All right. Let's keep this going. How many states are there? Oh, nice. They both look confident. Kelsey, go. Nailed it. Joey, nailed it. All right. Yay. Last question. When was the Declaration of Independence adopted? Oh, this is what I'm going to mess up. <laughs> I think I've had almost everyone wrong. <laughs> Hi, pretty girl. I don't know what this answer is. Give it a chance. What's the answer? What's the answer? Okay, we're gonna go with that. I have no idea. What did you I say? think it's either 1896, 1886. <laughs> <laughs> 17 you guys, something. You guys did so good. What what do we celebrate in Nicholas July? Nicholas Cage, help me. What do we celebrate in July? Oh, you meant Fourth of July. Fourth of July, July 4th, 1776. Oh, right, so I had the six. All right. I love it. All right. If gotta... you change this to a seven, <laughs> 1776, 1886, that's not that far off. All right. Well, it's let's get into this. Yeah, we gotta cut this out. Love. We gotta cut this. We're, we're gonna we're gonna hope you guys could do money better than you could do U.S. history. We Turn probably won't, but we're gonna we try. We just have a few minutes. Go right now. Don't let one another see. This is connects to my book. Talk money to me. You guys are gonna be cohabitating and hopefully here married soon. I know you guys are taking your time, but I'm excited for that wedding when it does happen. First question: One, yes or no? Do you know one another's credit score? And if so, or if yes, what do you think it is? Do you Wait, want don't me to, cheat, don't do cheat. Do you want me to put your credit score out there? No, it's great. No, put it out. I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna do it, but I'm just gonna say yes, and I'm gonna say I'm Kelsey, not putting Kelsey out there. You and I need to there. have a financial talk. <laughs> yes, I, no, I just my credit. It's because my credit have, age. She she doesn't. It, it's she doesn't have credit, credit, credit cards. She doesn't have credit cards. I only have two. Oh, okay. okay, so, so she doesn't have any credit. We'll talk about this in a second. Go. What's your answer? Do you know the Do you know the credit score? Yes or no? You don't have to share the credit score. I think I know hers. I don't think she knows mine. Okay. Okay, what do you yeah. think? Do you know his credit score? Yes. It's okay, a, what is it? Early, it's like high, or low 70s. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, she's okay, do you know her credit score? I think she's like 660. Is that 670, yeah. 660, okay. 660. You and I are going to talk offline, and then we're going to have a recap. We're going to talk about credit scores. 
Biggest thing with credit scores, no one should ever, first of all, you can, in just 90 days, that can go up. We'll yeah. talk about it. And no one should shame a bad credit score. I know people with four or I'm, 500 credit scores, they're multimillionaires. It's like, literally, I've no always, paid, shame a bad I've credit always score. paid on time. I've always done all these things that I'm supposed to do, but it's my credit age where it's like, yeah. I didn't get it until I was 22. Of course. And I'm 26. She, uh, yeah. <laughs> and mine, mine, I, so. I, had, I was at 730 and I went on the show and I had a payment from a credit card that I didn't answer for two and a half months. And I, <laughs> I, I busy mine in love. dropped like 80 points. Points. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? But that's my biggest and thing. And I was people. like, and now I'm just like, I have like four new credit cards that I'm just spending as much money as possible, and that shit's gets going up. We're it's doing, we're doing our job again. Uh, my but goddamn Venmo, Venmo <laughs> credit card. I bought, I bought like something online for a hundred bucks and never paid off. I went on a TV show and I come back, and my credit score bombed. You're like, I'm America's I sweetheart like, now. Fight like, goes I can't even get an apartment me. building. Fight goes villain in America's Jesus sweetheart. Christ. Hey, the good thing about credit, just as quick as it drops, it can improve. So that's yeah. a good thing. Okay. Okay, what's one thing that Kelsey, what's one thing that Joey overspends on? You know that they overspend <laughs> you can on write it. This Go, right what now. is it? What is something what, that Joey let me overspends on? Let me just on? do a oh. little bit of this, and that's all what you need is to know. What thing she overspends on? I'm going to throw Everything. five exclamation points on this. Okay, uh, Kelsey, you clearly got a softball here. Golf. Golf yeah. is the and easiest answer. Close. Do you Close. agree with it? <laughs> this okay. girl has so many clothes and she just goes and she's like I need more I'm oh like no God. you don't she's like I have no outfit this weekend okay yes, as you you're cohabitating what's the big if I give you right now if yeah. I give you 10 grand Kelsey yeah. you don't have to write this down I give you 10 grand oh. you have to spend 24 hours where are you spending it go don't even think go <laughs> just say it what do you think? Where are you going? Where are you going? Close. Okay, Mall. close. All right, I give you ten grand right now, Joey. Where are you spending it on? I'm taking all my boys on the best golf trip they've okay, ever been so on. Okay, so it's golf. <laughs> yeah. So hang on, quick little lesson I've here. I'm going to try with my girlfriends. Yeah, good. No, here's the thing. Yeah. Ready? I'm coming at you here. If her priority, if it's her number one priority, is clothes, let it be clothes. Yeah. Just because yours is golf doesn't I, mean clothes I don't is wrong. Hate on and it. just because his is golf yeah. doesn't mean that golf and, is wrong. I really don't think you. Like it's been crazy. It's just like that's the most, but yeah. it's not. Bad. We have two things that we're also, obsessed with. I don't with. Be, I'm not <laughs> spend money on. Now this here's the, the other. I'm not bad. No number though. two on the no, priority list. Number two, three, and four. If you write your priority list, yeah. obviously clothes is one for you. Golf is one for you. But then you go two, three, and four. Then that's where you're like, you kind of give you got to give each other shit. Because like if the first thing makes you that happy, spend on it. Don't worry about it. But like number two, three, four, five. That's where you want to adjust it. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Let's do this one. Monthly expenses. If you had to guess one another's monthly expenses, what do you think the total men- monthly expenses? are i'm going for hers you're guessing her total monthly expenses we'll start with you kelsey kelsey what do you think joey's total monthly expenses are i think it's five thousand five thousand joey what is it you think i would say right now it's probably been around that wow nailed it what do you think kelsey's is i was gonna say like 2.5k 2.5k wow you guys nailed it we've talked about this we have some good financial (laughs) transparency going into it it. all right well time is ticking here so i'm gonna let you guys off the hook easy i'm not gonna get into net worth or things like that but we'll have that conversation (laughs) offline you gotta talk money before you move into one another but we'll wrap this episode of trading secrets with one trading secret so we gotta get one trading secret from you kelsey one from you joey you can't learn it from a professor you can't learn it from a tiktok tutorial or a youtube you can only learn it from your career and life lessons it could be a money tip it could be a life mm-hmm. tip it could be just a quote that means something to you anything but it's a trading secret that's special to your experience who wants to go first i'll go first joey yeah, give us your trading time. secret uh, for me, I think that tennis has been such a beautiful job for me. Uh, I have been so lucky to meet so many successful people because usually the people that are at clubs, country clubs, at resorts, they're people that are very well off. Um, it is amazing when you get them in these atmospheres how much the last thing they want to talk about is their job. Mm-hmm. So my tip is more Try to connect with people about everything outside of what they do for a job. Oh, I love because it. Because when you go on vacation, it happens most of the time. That's the last thing they want to talk about. And if you can try to connect with them on something otherwise, the most successful people in the world are going to drop walls that they probably have not dropped before. I love it. Don't judge a person by their title or their job. Get to know them past that. Yep. Great trading secret. One we haven't had before. I love it. I subscribe to it. Kelsey, what do you got? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's something maybe that I've learned recently of just that the opinions that matter are your friends and family, the people that actually know you and not like the yes. outside noise, you know, people that don't know you, you know, they only see you for what you post and what, you know, is perceived, but there's so much more to you and, you know, to just what matters is your friends and family's opinions and the people that matter to you. That's a good point. I know there's, but I know it's a little bit lately. There's been yeah. a couple of those moments. 
And I think that's such a good learning lesson that yeah. when those other people are it, saying those nasty things, yeah. that's not a reflection of you, it's a reflection of them. Yes, exactly. And what matters is right next to you. Exactly. Right? So yeah. perfectly said. That's a great <laughs> trading secret. All right. For anyone that sleeps under a rock and can't find you guys or don't know who you are and they're only finding out through this podcast, where can they find you? Uh, at Joey Graz down Instagram. Can we give me a little more Z? Yeah. Joey Grazia. Yeah, there. now we're talking. <laughs> there Kels? It is. And I'm, Kelsey Anderson. Uh, yes, I'm underscore Kelsey underscore Anderson. <laughs> Anderson. Anderson. I love it. Well, thank you, Kelsey and Joy. Thank Joey, for uh, coming on this episode of Trade Secrets. We'll have you guys back in six to 12 months from now there we go. to see what it looks like. Are you still Let's in the see. game or are you back to project management <laughs> and tennis pro? More to Delete come. Thank you guys for being on. Thanks thank for having you. us, Jack. Woo.